I'm Jason Michael Perry, and I am a trainer and also an author for Smart Amoeba. And I'm here today to talk about Dreamweaver integration with WordPress, um, specifically how to use Dreamweaver CS5 to auto detect um, the WordPress uh, content management system and use some of the new hooks that are built in, which are some pretty cool features. Um, if you're curious, this is actually a snippet of the upcoming Dreamweaver and WordPress book by Smart Amoeba. Um, that book will hopefully be available for order come this uh, January or January 2011 um, by, um, from Smart Amoeba, Amazon, Barnes & Nobles, and you know, all the, the normal folks. <clears throat> anyway, um, if you guys watched one of the previous videos I put together, you're familiar with actually setting up WordPress locally on your machine, which means that you most likely have WAMP or MAMP installed and running locally. Um, in my case, I'm on a Mac, so I have MAMP. And if you're not familiar, MAMP stands for Mac, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. When you install and configure MAMP, um, you'll find that in your applications directory, you get a MAMP directory that also has your HTD, um, HT docs. And throughout the course of our book, we actually uh, build an application called Baconlicious, which is a Baconlicious and extremely delicious blog that talks about, uh, well, bacon culture, bacon recipes, bacon places, and, well, anything that's related to bacon, like chocolate bacon and a Krispy Kreme bacon cheeseburger. So I've already gone ahead and set up the Baconlicious site, um, and you can see here by the files that this is a WordPress site that's running and working locally on my machine. So now I want Dreamweaver to actually understand that I have a WordPress site, detect the code inting, and provide me with the ability to see live code views and live views um, using this content. So I'm going to hit Site, New Site, and I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new site, and I'm going to name it Baconlicious. What else would I name it? We also want to give it a path to the location of our Baconlicious content, and that happens to be in my application directory, as we saw a moment ago in our MAMP folder, in htdocs, which is the root of our web server, and in the Baconlicious subdirectory, which I'll choose. Cool. After you get the site configured, you need to tell it about your server locations. Um, we're running a local server, so we need to configure that information by going to the Servers tab and then hitting the plus sign here to pop up our additional options. I'm going to name a, my site Baconlicious Local. And instead of using FTP, since we're not going out to a remote web server, we're actually going to test this against the local WordPress instance on our local web server that we're running, I'll simply say Local Network. The server folder happens to be the same, so Applications. Once again, we're going to run all the way down to map and map I have my htdocs directory and I have baconlicious which I'll select and I'm going to set the web URL to localhost 8088 8888 and baconlicious which is the subdirectory that my WordPress site is actually installed at. Next hop to the advanced tab and we want to do one quick thing here and that's to set the testing server to PHP MySQL um, this lets Dreamweaver know that it should expect PHP code. Um, this also will give you the ability to dynamically connect to a MySQL database and generate PHP code using some of the Dreamweaver tools. Something you probably want, don't want to do with WordPress, but it's still nice to keep all of our options open. Um, I'll hit save, and if you're um, still here, you want to also go ahead and tell Dreamweaver this is a testing server, so it knows to use this for live code and live view, which we'll see in a moment. Um, you can set additional settings if you're actually, you know, configuring your site. You may want to tell it where the default images directory is and other things. But for what we need, this is it. That's, that's all that matters for us. So I'll go ahead and hit the Save button. And Dreamweaver will then cache your site, determine all the assets there. Um, this is mainly for it to determine what image assets are here and also to uh, um, automatically manage your linking and other things uh, throughout the Dreamweaver environment. With that done, What's left is to tell Dreamweaver exactly where our WordPress um, install is so it can use WordPress to generate code hinting directly for our application. So I'm going to go to Site and go to Site Specific Code Hints. It should detect everything automatically. Um, you see here the structure is automatically set to WordPress. It automatically knows the path to my, path to my WordPress server and has gone through and mark the files that it actually wants to in include for code hinting. If it states recursive, that means that it's going to also step through the subdirectories or the subfolders inside of that particular folder. So by doing this, 
Dreamweaver will know about all of the functions, all of the WordPress code, um, even the stuff in the core of the WordPress um, libraries that we need and automatically provide us with code hinting for those items. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here. And if this is your first time doing it, you should see that this new file automatically appears to DWPHP code hinting document. This um, is actually keeping track for Dreamweaver of all of our code hinting information and configuration data. The red line crossing through here means that the file is cloaked. Um, if we uh, later on upload this site to remote location, Dreamweaver will automatically ignore it since this is only needed for our local configuration needs. Okay, <clears throat> now that things are set up, we have a few cool features that Dreamweaver CS5 will give us. First of all, we're going to open up index.php in the root of our site. This is the actual root page for our server. Um, when this opens up, you'll see at the top you have the option for live code. And if you click it, after a few seconds, Dreamweaver will actually give you the code view back based on how this looks when the application and all the PHP is run against our site. Now, I've already themed my Baconlition site using a, a theme called Darkwood. So we can see here in the live view that also appears that this is how the Darkwood theme looks. And we can see um, here all of the code that's being automatically generated for us and how that code looks. So you can see this is pretty sweet. It automatically turns yellow. Um, and this yellow changes here um, just make it so that we um, makes it so that we know that this is read-only, that we can actually make changes to it. Sweet. Now, with that scene, I'm going to jump to WP Content Themes. And over here in the theme section, I have my Darkwood theme. And I'm going to find the header.php file um, for this particular theme. Um, right here, I have the bacon, um, the blog info, which shows the name Baconlicious. And I also have the description, which says, Bacon is the meaning of life, love, and liberty, which is very true. But I instead want to get from the uh, actual WordPress server, whatever the tagline is or the description. So I'm going to type a PHP tag like that. And inside of this PHP tag, I want to call that blog info or um, block to get in the information we need. Now, if I hit control space, you see that I automatically get this code hinting list, which is a brand new feature. And as I start typing, blog info pops up in my code hinting list. It also shows me over here to the right where blog info is actually defined inside of the WordPress environment. So this will also get hooks that have been defined specifically for your theme if your theme developer has done that. So I'm going to say blog info, and I want to get the description. I'm going to save my header at PHP and then run back to index.php. If I refresh this, you see that now I get the default tagline, which is just another WordPress site. And when I select it here in my live view, it also shows the corresponding selection in my live code view over here to the left. So I can actually see that these changes have, uh, have been made. From here, we can just keep on theming and styling. And the benefit is that we can do this all in Dreamy without having, having to constantly save our document, publish it, see if it looks the way we expect it to look, um, then go back and do it again and over and again and over and again, um, which gets to be a very, very tedious task. This gives us one unified environment to do everything. Uh, hopefully, this helps. And uh, please keep an eye out at www.smartamoeba.com for other videos and tutorials. Also, check out our training in our books.